Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Castles of Lost Cities Images taken by satellites revealed new evidence of a lost civilization in the Sahara Desert. This is one of the most inhospitable parts of one of the most extreme places in the world. A team from the University of Leicester discovered proof that people lived here 2,000 years ago. It seems impossible, yet the team identified over 100 fortified villages and towns, and even castle-like structures, all decaying in the desert. These date from between the year 1 and 500 AD. David Mattingly, project leader, said it was like someone coming to England and suddenly discovering every medieval castle. These settlements had gone completely unnoticed and unrecorded by the Libyan government. But who built these mysterious ancient castle cities in the desert? Researchers believe it was a group called the Garamantes. We don't know much about the civilization's culture and lifestyle. However, that doesn't mean they were primitive or any less advanced than other civilizations of the day. Their ability to thrive and build in one of the most volatile places on the planet is proof of their prowess. The discovery is changing how we view ancient history, because up until now, researchers took the Roman accounts of the Garamantes for truth. The Romans called them barbaric nomads and accused them of being troublemakers on the edge of their empire. But all these castles and fortifications prove the Garamantes were highly civilized. They turned the desert into an oasis, had their own written language, and were pioneers of trade in the Sahara. What happened to them is unknown, and their cities are still shrouded in mystery. Number 9. Mummified Monsters in Egypt Archaeologists at the Kuabat al-Hawa burial site in southern Egypt found 10 mummified crocodiles in 2019. But it wasn't until 2023 that scientists finished studying the reptiles and dated them at 2,300 years old. These mysterious crocodiles were found extremely well-preserved, with many of them over 11 feet long. After years of study, Researchers are fairly certain they know what happened to them. They think they were embalmed and mummified just like ordinary people, to be given as offerings to the revered Egyptian god Sobek. Sobek was the reptilian deity of ancient Egypt, closely associated with military might and royal power. The Egyptians believed that by mummifying the animal associated with the god, they would earn its favor. It's unclear who ordered these animals to be mummified, something that would have been pretty difficult. The crocodiles would have needed to be captured and then euthanized. The whole process would have been very expensive. It may have been an ancient pharaoh from around 300 BC who wanted to gain Sobek's favor to have a more successful rule over Egypt. Number 8. The Biblical King Hezekiah Israeli archaeologists recently deciphered an ancient inscription from the 8th century BC found on a wall in an underground tunnel. The tunnel can be found just outside the walls of the city of David, or ancient Jerusalem. The inscription shocked researchers because it seems to match directly with passages from both the Book of Kings and Book of Chronicles, found in the Old Testament. It's a controversial case of archaeological evidence proving the reality of what is written in the Bible. Professor Gershon Galil is the head of the Institute for Biblical Studies at Haifa University. He and his colleague Eli Shukran had the responsibility of deciphering the text. They say the inscription details the deeds of King Hezekiah, one of the figures from the Bible. It lists his great accomplishments during his first 17 years of rule. It talks about his grandeur as a political leader, his military might, his accumulation of wealth, and his infrastructure projects. The text inside the tunnel predates the earliest manuscripts of the Bible, including the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's irrefutable proof that the Bible reflects historical events and is not just all fantasy. One of the events confirmed by the text is the Siloam Tunnel. It was one of the most remarkable engineering projects ever undertaken by ancient people. A 1,750-foot tunnel was built at the order of King Hezekiah to bring fresh water from outside the city of David to the Pool of Siloam. 
This was to ensure the safety of the city's inhabitants in the event of an Assyrian invasion. It's something written in the Bible and something that really happened in history. The Siloam Pool happens to be the same place where Jesus Christ healed the blind man in the New Testament, making some wonder if that truly happened as well. And now for number seven. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Millie J and Boot Dink, who is a longtime subscriber. I know you've been waiting, so I hope you see the shout out. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more incredible discoveries. Number seven. The Mysterious Paranthropus The origin of the human species is one of the most controversial topics in science. Most mainstream anthropologists agree our ancestors deviated from chimpanzees six million years ago. Since the time of the split, at least 20 known species of hominids evolved. These days, only Homo sapiens are left. But how we beat the rest, what our ancient ancestors were like, and how many there were is still a major mystery. Take the case of our cousin Paranthropus. It existed from about 2.5 until 1.5 million years ago. Its remains were found in 1938 by Robert Broom. The early archaeologists thought he had found the fossilized jaws and teeth of an ape, then was perplexed when the remains turned out to be more human than gorilla. The creature could clearly walk upright, yet it was larger than most of our ancestors. The Paranthropus is still one of the closest things we've ever found to the missing link. It was about 5 feet tall, it had teeth as thick as a thumb, and it wasn't very smart. Scientists think the Paranthropus represents one of the earliest deviations on our family tree. As the climate became colder and drier, hominids split in half. One branch remained ape-like, while the other became early humans. The humans had smaller teeth. They were shorter, but their brains got bigger. Then, about 1.5 million years ago, the Paranthropus went extinct, and the Homo lineage had evolved to be six feet tall. The Homo species got an edge over everyone else when they learned how to make tools out of stone. Number 6. Zerzevan Castle Zerzevan Castle contains a mysterious temple once used by the cult of Mithras. It can be found about 93 miles from the even more mysterious ancient site of Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. The castle was built 3,000 years ago, destroyed by the Assyrians, then rebuilt by the Roman Empire. But what makes the temple so exciting and controversial is that it houses one of only 22 known Mithras temples. The most distant temple in the West can be found hiding in London while Zerzevan holds the most well-preserved traces of the infamous Mithras initiation rituals. If you're not sure what Mithras was, let's do a quick recap. The cult of Mithras, or the Mithraic Mysteries, was a religion that picked up serious steam in Rome around 2,000 years ago. It was based on an old Persian god, tweaked by the Romans, and competed directly with early Christianity. If Christianity had failed, Mithras might still be worshipped today. But the thing about the Mithraic mysteries is that they were extremely secretive. We don't have any written testimonies of what went on within the religion. We know they were serious about astronomy, they were very esoteric and performed initiation rites. But the exact details have been lost for thousands of years. Inside this long-forgotten castle is the old temple to Mithras, where archaeologists have uncovered strange symbols that have never been explained. Nothing was written down, and so there are many long-lost truths that scientists simply can't figure out. Number 5. The Extinction of the Anasazi Scientists believe they may have finally figured out what happened to the mysterious ancient Puebloans, also known as the Anasazi. These were the people who lived in the Chaco Canyon during the 12th century. They prospered in the Four Corners region of the United States for hundreds of years, then vanished abruptly and seemingly without reason. The ruins of their homes can still be found today in New Mexico. There were at least 2,000 people in the Chaco Canyon when they suddenly packed up and left about 700 years ago. The extinction of the Anasazi is a touchy subject among historians. Some believe it was climate change that destroyed their crops and left them starving. Others think they migrated south and joined the Aztecs in Mexico. 
Retired geochemist Larry Benson says it was almost definitely a sudden lack of rain that caused everyone to leave the Chaco Valley. His research shows a series of droughts began around the year 1130 and continued for 300 years. The New Mexico desert may seem barren today, but it was apparently even worse. Even if the Anasazi had concentrated all their efforts into feeding their people, they still couldn't have been able to grow a thing. Even if this is true, it doesn't explain what happened to them. Scientists still can't say where the Anasazi migrated to, or if they all just stuck around and slowly starved. Number 4. The Treasury of Atreus The Treasury of Atreus is a huge beehive tomb built 3,400 years ago in ancient Mycenae, Greece. As far as anyone knows, it is the biggest and most impressive tomb of its kind from the Bronze Age in the Aegean. It contains a circular burial chamber topped by a huge dome. Amazingly, the dome ceiling of the tomb was the largest dome in the world until the Pantheon was constructed, 1,600 years later. Clearly, whoever this tomb was built for was extremely important. It was crafted from the most luxurious marble, every last detail meticulously done to perfection. And yet, scientists don't know who was buried here. They have a lot of theories but no concrete evidence. It's extremely controversial because many say the tomb belonged to the mythical king Agamemnon. He was the Mycenaean ruler who led the Greeks in battle against the Trojans in the 18th century BC. Another theory is that the tomb was built for Atreus, who killed his half-brother by throwing him into a well and then was banished to Mycenae. His story is popular in Greek myth, though there's never been any evidence he really existed. Agamemnon was said to be Atreus' son, and he was killed after returning from the Trojan War. It's impossible for archaeologists to say who the tomb was built for. All we really know is that it was the grandest of all Mycenaean tombs, fit for a king. If it really did belong to Agamemnon, it could mean the story of Troy, the Trojan War, and the Trojan Horse is real. Number 3. The First Roman Highway Italian archaeologists have revealed that they will likely never find the remains of the entrance to the First Roman Highway. It's a mystery we've been trying to solve for decades. We already know about the First Roman Highway, the Appian Way. However, researchers have been trying to find the first mile of it, the very first place it all started. When they say all roads lead to Rome, the first piece of the Appian Way was where it all started. In the 4th century BC, Appius Claudius Caicus pushed to have the great highway created. The Romans called it Regina Viarum, or Queen of the Roads. It would be extremely important because it would connect the city of Rome to the port city of Brindisi. This would start an age of easy trade the likes of which the world had never seen. Ships could arrive at the port, goods could easily be transported to Rome by road, and then they could make their way to other places. Makes sense, right? But here's the thing about the road. It's buried. The landscape has changed a lot in 2,400 years, and the first mile of the road is buried 26 feet underground. Researchers have been trying desperately to uncover the first traces of it, only to abandon their efforts in early 2023. Scientists dug about 18 feet deep, then discovered a groundwater current. They think the original mile of the Queen of Roads has been completely washed away. Number 2. Hidden Relics In 2008, a medieval pendant was discovered in the German town of Mainz. Now, researchers from the Leibniz Center for Archaeology have used a neutron beam to solve its mystery. The non-invasive technique revealed tiny splinters of bone hidden inside the pendant. Archaeologists say these bone fragments are most likely religious relics. The issue was corrosion. Researchers could not open the pendant to look inside because it's 800 years old and could break. They had to look using prompt gamma activation analysis, scanning the interior with neutrons. The scan revealed five packets of silk and linen, each one containing bone splinters. The pendant itself is decorated with pictures of Jesus and the four female saints. It was made in the 12th century, somewhere in Lower Saxony. But who in the world do these splinters of bone belong to? In the medieval days, it was popular to collect the bones, 
hair, or even teeth of deceased saints. People would carry these fragments of holy humans around with them like good luck charms. The bone splinters likely come from a real-life saint. Scientists just don't have a clue which one. Number 1. The Power of Gold Thanks to ancient texts deciphered from Sumerian tablets found in the 1800s, we know a fair amount about the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were worshipped by the Sumerians 5,500 years ago as godly deities who came down from the stars to teach humans the knowledge of the cosmos. This has been interpreted in a lot of different ways throughout the years. These days, many believe the Anunnaki were extraterrestrials who came to Earth specifically to mine gold in southern Africa. That's because gold wasn't used by them as something for jewelry, but rather for their technology. These same believers theorize that the Anunnaki were the ones who taught us things like mathematics. We still use the same systems of math and measurement as they did in Sumer in 3500 BC. There are even ancient tablets from Mesopotamia that show the Anunnaki handing over agricultural instruments to their human subjects. For ancient alien enthusiasts, this is an obvious display of one race passing knowledge on to another. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!